afternoon to five. Um, it's so good to have you with us. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I, my name is Claire, um, and I am part of the team that helps lead this service. Um, so it's really good to have you with us. Um, so tonight's service is going to be slightly different to our normal running. So we are going to start off by having communion, um, which will be great. Um, which will then lead into a time of worship and um, prayer, and then some, um, Martha's going to come and speak to us. And then after the service, we've got food. Um, so if you've signed up for that, thank you very much. That's really helpful. But we, it's going to be an opportunity for us to feed back our thoughts on the five. So we changed the service time of um, this service back at Easter in 2021, um, no, 20, yeah, we are 21, I'm a year ahead of myself in my head. Um, and so we gave it a trial period to see how it would work and see what it would look like. Um, and obviously things have changed a lot since Easter. We're now back able to meet in the building. We're back able to eat with each other and have more fellowship. So um, this is really an opportunity to hear back from you, how you finding the service, how you found the timings and all of that malarkey. So we are going to be doing that after the service. If you haven't signed up but would like to join us, if you could just grab me or Martha, um, that would be really helpful so we can make sure we've got enough plates and there should be enough food. The Lord does multiply. Um, so that's amazing. So before Tim comes up to worship, um, comes up to lead communion, um, I'm just going to pray for us um, before we go into that space. So Father God, we thank you so much for this week. We thank you so much that you are here with us. We thank you that you are a God who wants to meet personally with us. And before we come to your table, Lord, we just lay our week down whether it's been amazing, whether it's been quite difficult, whether it's been really frantic with lots of Christmas things going on and starting, or whether it's just felt quite long, we just lay that down at your, the foot of your cross. Lord, we want to meet with you here this evening. This, we want to meet with you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our salvation and our, um, our Father. So would you help us to open our ears, open our hearts to hear your voice this evening? Would you give us your joy? Would you give us your peace this evening? In your name, amen. Tim, take it away. Oh, thank you. So uh, we're going to do things slightly differently today. We're uh, going to start with uh, communion. So I thought it would be really good just to maybe have a, a time where we prepare our hearts. So maybe just where you are, just close your eyes. And uh, I'm just going to open with a prayer, which just reminds us about what we're doing when we come to communion. Let's pray. Risen Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you in your sanctuary, in your house of prayer, and we remember all that you have done for us. We bring it to mind, Lord, of your death on the cross and your rising again. We thank you that you came from heaven to earth to be one with us so that we could become one with you. We're reminded of that last supper that you had with your disciples where you put yourself, Lord Jesus, into that meal and you declared yourself to be the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That when you raised up the bread, your body was raised up on the cross, the body broken for us so that we could be made whole. When you lifted up that cup of wine at that last supper, we're reminded of that blood shed 
that first Passover and put around the doorposts of the people of Israel so that the angel of death passed over or by your sacrifice we have eternal life and life in its fullness well through this meal we belong to you and you belong to us we recognize that when you Lord Jesus died on the cross we died to self when you rose we rose to new life. That we, Lord Jesus, are in you. That we are in this meal. And as we partake of this meal, we associate ourselves with you, Lord Jesus. And we are fed by you. We are nourished by you spiritually. We have life in you. So, Lord, we prepare our hearts as we come to receive this meal, a meal of your grace. Nothing in our hands we bring, simply to the cross we cling. So Holy Spirit, come. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, and feed us we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come now to this prayer that we know so well, and uh, hopefully the words will appear on the screen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We uh, remain seated as we say the Lord's Prayer together. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. 
because we all share in one bread. So we have uh, gluten-free wafers and non-alcoholic wine, should you prefer. Please do ask, and we'll bring those to you. Um, I'll be at the front, and just one by one, if you'd like to come up, and I will uh, give you an intinctured wafer into the wine, uh, which you can receive as the body and blood of Christ. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Before the throne of God above I have a strong and perfect plea A great high priest whose name is love Whoever lives and pleads for me My name is graven on his hands My name is written on his heart I know the wall in heaven he stands No tongue can bid me then depart No tongue can bid me then depart Oh, God. 
worshipping um, I really feel like the Lord is asking us to stand together um, and to just take a moment to pray for each other um, this in the five we like to pray for each other we like to invite the Lord into a, into the lives together um, so apologies if this is slightly beyond your comfort zone but I really feel like the Lord is asking us just for the people that are next to us just to spend 30 seconds a minute just asking the Lord to fill each other with his spirit asking the Lord that we might know his love deeply this evening and so as the band just carry on um, and playing over us I want to encourage you to turn to the person next to you and together pray that the Lord might fill them. And if you've got a specific need, if there's something that you are struggling with, can I encourage you to just share it with that person that's next to you and ask them to just pray that the Lord would come into that situation and just pray that he might bless your neighbor.
But if you are not feeling peaceful, press in because the Lord is a, the Lord of peace. He is the Prince of peace, the everlasting peace, the peace that transcends all understanding. would you help us to hear your voice to continually tonight and this week may your spirit be talking to us and impacting us and challenging us in your name amen amen if you'd like to take a seat that would be brilliant um so we're just gonna segue into our next part of the service i realize we're Time's running on, but it's been a good, good afternoon. So um, we are reading today from Acts 2, verses 42 to the end, the fellowship of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to everyone who needed it. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amazing. Well, hello, I'm Martha, if we haven't already met, if you haven't had the pleasure of meeting me. Um, I am the youth pastor here, um, and I've been here for just over a year now. Um, and I talk quite a lot about, oh, about being a vulnerable leader and being honest and, and speaking from the heart and, and being honest about what God is doing in my life and in the lives of our young people and what I believe he's saying to us as a church so in all honesty, this past month's been hard. Um, it's been hard. I didn't think I was going to cry. Wow. It's been hard for our young people. And the conversations I've been having with those young people have been hard. But God has driven home to me time and time again this month the urgency of the gospel the urgency of the calling on our lives as Christians and the urgency on what we are called to do as the people of God here in Chorleywood. And so it's from that place that I speak to you this evening in preparation for uh, our feedback and food later, but also in preparation for just us as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, of what he has called us to do um, in this place of Chorleywood and further afield. So like I said, I haven't been here that long just over a year, but I understand that Acts 2.42 is St. Andrew's verse. It's our vibe. It's what we believe in and it's what our vision is. And as a team of staff here, um, it gives us a clear framework for how we are meant to be as the people of God in community together. It starts off, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. It also explains perfectly the heart behind what we, as an evening service team, want this gathering to be, regardless of timing. We want it to be a place where people can gather, where we can learn about God in an, in an accessible but challenging way. We want it to be a place where we can grow in community as a family of God. We want it to be a place where people meet God through communion, through prayer, and through worship. However, as we continue reading this passage further, we see a challenge. Everyone was filled with awe at the many Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And as a closeted introvert, this is my idea of hell, but we move on. 
Over the past few months, I have felt God challenge me personally, and I wonder if he's challenging us, more of us, this evening. And the challenge comes from a conversation I had with a non-Christian friend a few years ago that I keep re-remembering recently. We were in a pub where all good, deep conversations happen, and they asked me about some of the stuff in the Bible that they'd heard about. And as I was explaining and using the church in Acts as an example, they loudly told me, you see, this is the problem. If God was real, you'd see poop, they didn't say poop, like that happening all the time, but you don't. You never see people being healed these days. And I said, well, yes, you do. And I listed some of the amazing things I'd seen Jesus do in my life and in other people's lives. And um, then they said, and this bit is the bit that keeps coming up in my head. I don't know. The way Christians act and talk, you wouldn't think God was up to much these days. And that hit home to me then as a slightly younger Christian who was trying to find my place in working for a church. But it massively hits home to me recently. The way Christians act and talk, you wouldn't think God was up to much these days. Our Christianity has become small, palatable, and church has become a place where we come to get stuff. I know I'm guilty of it, thinking about how much I got out of a service or how church would be better for me. But the church we see in Acts 2 is a church that is radically sacrificial where they don't want anything for themselves. Everything is everyone's. Where their homes are open and God moved and everyone was in awe. If I'm being honest, I think way before the pandemic, I got this wrong. I viewed serving as an obligation, literally as my job, rather than an exciting thing to be a part of. And I think a few more of us might have got it wrong as well. I think for most, being part of a church was becoming a habit pre-pandemic. Because I cannot count the amount of conversations I've had with people since March 2020, where they would say it was so nice to have a break from the monotony of church. What did we get so wrong that we needed a break from church? Church is a place where we should come expectant to see God move. We should, we should rejoice in serving the kingdom of God because we know that we come, when we come early to welcome a brother and sister or sister in Christ at the door after a long, hard week, we have shown them that Jesus loves them, that they are not alone. When we get here early for tech or AV or cameras or worship, we do it to give our best and serve because we know that God will transform hearts and minds as we worship him. And we get to be a part of that. When we join the kids team and play crazy games with them and think about how we can tell them as Jesus about Jesus, we do it because we know that when kids become Christians, they will transform their schools and their after-school clubs. Because God is already at work in our kids and toddlers and we are excited to be a part of it not to mention the joy that youth work is throughout the week. We get out of bed early, cut short social activities, change plans because we are so expectant and excited about church that we cannot wait to get there and be a part of it, not to consume it. The Church of Acts transformed the world, not through convenience or being comfortable, quite the opposite in fact. The Church of Acts transformed the world by putting themselves last. God first and everyone else in between. It was not easy. It led to the ultimate sacrifice for many and little sacrifices for all. However, it changed the world. Christian author Morton T. Kelsey coined the phrase, church is not a museum for the saints but a hospital for sinners. This week, Jake, our kids worker, and I were on our way back from buying Tesco out of mince pies. And we were talking about how every church we knew, big and small, was struggling for volunteers. And I don't have a solution for that. If I did, I think I'd be making a lot more money. But I do have a theory. 
The world is crying out for hope, for peace. They are crying out for Jesus and they just don't know it yet. And I think we need to face up to the fact that the devil would like nothing better than there to be nowhere near enough workers when harvest time rolls in. God is on the move. We are in the heartbreaking situation of having to think about turning people away and not doing things because the workers are few. It has been hard, but many of us feel like God is moving and we want to be ready for what, whatever happens. Saying, here I am, God, use me. As I said when I first started talking, it's been a hard month. And I remember years ago when I first became a youth pastor, singing that song, break my heart for what breaks yours, everything I am for your kingdom's cause. And man, did I regret that recently. Because it really did break my heart what happened to Lucy. It broke my heart because it's not the first time it's happened in youth ministry I've been a part of. And there are so many things going on in the world that break God's heart, that break our hearts. But if we give everything we have for the kingdom's cause, then it won't just transform the lives of the people here in Chorty Wood. It will transform generations, people young and old. Glory will fall and we will be astounded by what God does. I was recently at a conference and a guy you may have heard of called Mike Pilavacci was talking and he said that the problem with moves of God in the past was that there were these amazing things happening in the building and then it was like the Holy Spirit went out the door and we forgot to follow it. Tim loves to talk about where God is already on the move in our community and what we can already do. And I had a great conversation with some parents earlier today about all the stuff, the good stuff that was happening in our youth ministry. But none of it happens in this room on a Sunday. I had a conversation about some really great stuff that happened in the midst of a horrible month, but none of it happened in this building on a Sunday. If we want to be a part of a church that changes our community, that changes the world, we have to start looking at church as if it's not for us. It's for those that aren't yet in it. And so as we move in later to talking about what this gathering should be or should be, what timing it should be, remember that regardless of time, regardless of place, how are we going to make this Christian community, the 9, the 11, and the 5, or the 6.30, or whatever, a place where people can feel like they can come in and meet their saviour? whether it's for the first time or for the hundredth time, because that's what the world needs. It needs us, our hearts to be broken for what breaks his and for us to give everything for his kingdom's cause. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are with us in our heartbreak. We thank you that you are mourning when we mourn. We thank you that you are with us in the hard times, Lord, but we thank you especially that you are powerful you are glorious and you are almighty God of heaven and of earth and so Lord we pray that you would fill each and every single one of us with your Holy Spirit with your power with your might so that when we leave this place we can take you and show you to the people all around us in Chorley Wood and further afield, Lord. For in our workplaces, in our schools, in our offices, in our um, university lectures, wherever we may be, Lord. I pray that you empower us to give our all for your kingdom's cause. In your name. Amen. Oh, that's um, a challenge. And as we're challenged, I feel like the Lord is calling us to be brave. And so if you feel like you need to be empowered... I want to 
ask you to stand where you are. If it's, yeah, if you feel like you need to be empowered in your day-to-day life, to stand. So that's kind of everyone in the room, which is amazing. And so we're going to do this in two steps. I am going to pray for each one of us, pray over us. And then the groups that we were praying in earlier, I think let's pray for each other again with a specific thought of knowing that you are empowered, that we might be praying over one another, that we might know the Spirit of God as he empowers us to break down barriers and to step out into our community and to be bold and to see where he is already working, to step in line with where the Spirit is. And so, Father God, come. Holy Spirit, come in this place. Holy Spirit, come into our hearts. You are here, Lord. You are so here. We lift our arms to you. We outstretch them. We cry out, Holy Spirit, empower us. Blast the fear that holds us back. Whatever that may be, Lord, we just pray that you would blast that fear out of the door. Whether that's fear of what people might think of us. Fear of stepping out and looking foolish. Fear of you not turning up when we step. Holy Spirit, come. Come, come. We want to see your kingdom come in our community, in the places that we work the places that we step into every week so that people would know that they are loved by the King. We are loved by the King. So open your hearts. If there is something that is blocking you, Declare it in front of him and know that he loves you. That as we step, we're only stepping into his footprints. Claire was praying and she talked about fear of stepping and God not being there. God reminded me of that passage um, where Jesus is healing the man with a crippled hand and he says, stretch out your hand and the guy doesn't know that he's healed until he does it. And I feel like if you're today in that fear of like, I don't, I don't think God's going to be there. He's, he's calling you 
to that and that takes bravery and so if you feel like you need that bravery then when we, we're going to turn into our, our little groups to pray now and ask for that bravery from them ask to say I need this bravery from God can you please pray for it with me so I feel that specifically for somebody today yeah so can I encourage you to turn into your into your twos into your threes into the area and just pray for empowering 